So the New Orleans Pelicans completed their first preseason game against the Miami Heat in a game where they won 112 to about 92. This game was to show off what the Pelicans learned from last season. I'm also shown how they have grown as players and what can they pick up from their new head coach, Van Gundy. Just to go over some quick takeaways from the game, the New Orleans Pelicans played with great grit, great um, hustle. Um, I really like what they were doing on the defensive end, how they were looking. And just for it to be their first game and some of these guys' first week or two weeks playing with each other, it really was impressive to see how they stretched the lead on the Miami Heats and did not give the lead back up like some rookie teams do. Um, it showed the maturity in the game with Brandon Ingram. You saw Brandon Ingram scoring from three, scoring from mid-range. He was doing a lot on the defensive end, coming up with three steals. And it was good to see him pick up where he left off after getting a new contract. You also saw Zion Williamson pick up where he left off, scoring 26 points and taking it into the rim. He didn't shoot any threes, which I wanted to see from him. But it was still an impressive bout from Zion Williamson to finally get that game over 30 minutes under his belt and see how he could do against a formidable opponent like Bam Adebayo and the Miami Heat. If you do remember, I did go over the three lineups that the Pelicans were going to try to start the game. I told you they were going to try the Lonzo Ball with Eric Bledsoe lineup. I told you they were going to try the Lonzo Ball with J.J. Riddick and the Lonzo Ball with Josh Hart. And they actually did the Lonzo Ball with Josh Hart starting lineup. And it worked really well. Josh Hart was playing with great tenacity. Um, he was playing really, really good defense, coming up with some really big plays on the board. Um, I felt like he can pick up his three ball a little bit, but it was still good to see Josh Hart back on the floor. Alonzo Ball it was a really good outing to see what he can do. Another person that was impressive was Steven Adams. Um, him playing defense, you saw him setting a few screens for Zion down low in the post, which I thought was really fun. Um, the New Orleans Pelicans overall were getting put back shots because of Steven Adams. Steven Adams would get into the line, um, getting a second chance points. And the Pelicans were killing the Miami Heats on the glass. So it is good to see a team go from a coach like Alvin Gentry, who only focused on fast breaks, to a well-balanced coach team in Van Gundy. Now, Nikhil Alexander-Walker was another guy who grew his game going fourth of eight in the Miami Heat game, and the Pelicans were just pouring it on. Nikola Melli hit a three. Um, he needed to pick up his play a little bit. I like Sandorius Thornwell. Seemed like he was communicating out there, playing with a lot of good energy. You saw Kyra Lewis get in the game, get him two scores. He scored in the paint and then scored a three ball. So this team was looking like they can pour it on. If they get a little more time together, they stay healthy. They can come together and win games. But one thing I wanted to see is who is the Pelicans' third option? You have two guys. And Lonzo Ball and Eric Bledsoe. And you want to know who's going to be your third option out there with the New Orleans Pelicans once Bledsoe comes into the lineup. Both of these guys don't score as much, but I think they can score more. Lonzo Ball only averaging about 11 points per game last season. And Bledsoe only averaging about 14 points per game last season. Who do you want as your third option for the New Orleans Pelicans? So, Lonzo Ball. Lonzo Ball is going to be a guy who can take it to the goal, which he did really well doing against the Miami Heat. That's where most of his points came from. He missed a lot of threes going two for nine, but he was keeping his confidence by driving it to the goal and finishing at the rim, which we also talked about in my last video, how Lonzo Ball can improve himself by finishing at the goal, which he did do. Now, Lonzo Ball can also improve himself if he gets his free throw right and he starts making those free throws. Now, if Lonzo Ball gets his three ball right and he's making free throws, he's going to be a very dangerous player in the entire NBA. And I like his three point percentage last year it was 37 percent, but he can pick that up. He can also improve it. You have some games where he looked dry shooting the ball and you have some games where he looked good shooting the ball. But what you want to see is that consistency. You want to see him at 40 percent shooting the three consistently um, hitting his threes, knocking down his shots. And I think that'll really make him a viable third option over Eric Bledsoe. Now, Bledsoe is a guy 
who's good at driving to the paint. He's very reliable when he gets to the rim. And when you get Bledsoe in transition or you get Bledsoe in a one-on-one -on -one situation, you can have confidence in him to finish that matchup at the goal. Which I think makes it tricky is Lonzo Ball is not good at finishing the rim. Bledsoe is good at finishing at the rim. Where Bledsoe is not good at shooting the three ball, Lonzo Ball is just a little bit better shooting the three ball. I think for this one, whoever hitting the threes the most consistent should be the third option for the New Orleans Pelicans. And the reason I'm saying that, because Eric Bledsoe can score the ball a little bit better than Lonzo at the rim. But if Eric Bledsoe is always driving the paint, then that clogs the paint up because Lonzo, Eric Bledsoe, Zion Williamson, and Steven Adams all going to the rim. Uh, it clogs the paint up. Need to space the floor for Zion Williamson by shooting threes. And you cannot clog the paint up. That's why I wouldn't think to go to Eric Bledsoe as a third option if all he's going to do is drive the paint. But if Lonzo Ball is hitting threes and Bledsoe is hitting threes, then that helps the team completely because now you got us shooting threes consistently and we're actually making them and that helps zion williamson open up his game you don't got to worry about them double team and triple teaming him like they were doing against miami um Nikhil alexander walker were hitting his shots which caused the miami heat not to crowd zion williamson which means zion williamson gets easy points at the basket but comment down below who do you think the new orleans pelicans option should be third option should be I want you guys to type Bled for Bledsoe and type ZO2 for Lonzo Ball. Who do you think the Pelicans' third option should be? Me, in this bout, I think the New Orleans Pelicans should go with the guy who is hitting their threes because it's going to space the floor for Zion Williamson. But in crunch time situation, if Zion's not on the floor, you can go to Bledsoe. Whoever's hitting their threes is going to be the most important thing in the starting five for the New Orleans Pelicans. But make sure you comment down below for a shout out in the next video on who do you think the New Orleans Pelicans third option should be. If you think it should be Bled, type Bled. If you think it should be Lonzo, type ZO2. Um, shout out to OJ Jackson. Shout out to DP3. Shout out to Tony W. Um, and shout out to the new subscribers, man. Everybody who's subscribing to the channel. Definitely shout out to those guys who's been rocking with me since day one. Um, shout out to you guys who've been subscribed to the channel. And keep keep it pouring in, man. Thanks for all the support. And with that being said, I'm out. Be blessed. Have a happy holiday, man. Be cool.